What's good? We back in the building. It's your boy CJ Goodfellow back with the Boston Clinic one time for the one time. Shout out to the LDBC, the YTBC. We working. Y'all know what it is, man. Shout out to all the channels that I've came across this year. Um, must give y'all a shout out while I can remember it. Ashley's Corners, Trap House Boxing, Moni Brown TV. Um, amazing year. Uh, Truth and Facts About Boxing, my boy Bo. Amazing year. You know, we, we grew leaps and bounds on from where we was at in the beginning of the year and uh God willing and all the blessings that he put upon us that the channels continue to grow and um we can start doing some collabs as well. But we here, we in the building talking about the boxing clinics, CJ Goodfellas, top five favorite fighters right now, and five fighters that I don't like so much right now. And we're gonna keep it uh one hundred. Uh start off the five fighters I don't like. I mean number one for me, it's clearly uh, Leo Santa Cruz. I don't like that guy. I don't like the way he moves. I don't like, you know, all the tune-up fights. I'm just keeping it 100 right now. I just, I'm not feeling, I'm not feeling him at all. And there's not too many fighters that I, I, I don't like, but, you know, second is rigging down now. After what he pulled, he was a guy who was in the sympathy list. Um, I have no more sympathy for Grimmo rigging down at all. Um, you know, I... After the way he just, you know, he talked all that junk and just quit at the sign of, you know, he got out at the sign of trying to get out. I can't rock with that guy no more, man. You know, I I wish him the best. Let's not get it wrong. I do wish Cuz the best, man. You know, I wish he'd go on and do things. And they did him wrong. They freezed him out. And uh, they still ain't calling him out after that. But, you know, I just, I just you know, I just ain't rocking with him. Third, third is Adrian Broner. Um, you know, he was supposed to, he was selling, he was in shape. You know, I'm in shapes, squares, circles, rectangles. And he came out there and um and that was it was the loss to Mikey Garcia. It was the last dance for me personally before he became an official Adrian I mean A B the gatekeeper, aka Andre Berto 2.0, 1.5, whatever you want to call him. Um what was excuses after it? You know, he said he ran all over the ring and he was the one really running and the things he doing outside the ring is just I I mean you know, I know his promotional company, Low Key, a lot of people don't know it's on the come up. You know, he's doing a lot of great things behind the scene, getting boxer signed. Um, and I don't think he need he, you know, I don't think he needs boxing no more. Uh four, uh Danny Garcia, um, not answering a knock on the door from Sean Porter and Earl Spence after saying, you know, uh stuff about Sean Porter and Earl Spence, I believe he said for sure he said about Sean Porter, you know, ain't no guy beating me without a jab, and Porter's tailor made for me a, a year or two ago. Porter answered the knock on the door when, when when he seen an opportunity for him and uh Danny to fight for the mandatory for Keith Thurman. He was willing to put his mandatory status up for that. Danny was like, no moss, no moss, no moss. And, um, you know, that was what it was with him, man. You know, uh, five for me is Aries Landy Laura. Um, just so boring to watch, man. And his selection of opponents, um, it's just been very mundane. I mean, you know, uh, him and Andrade... Andrade, whatever you want to call him, they couldn't make the fight happen. Um, I didn't like that at all. Um, and he just didn't have a big fight this year. And he'd been on a stinky streak with his fighting, his opponents that he's fighting, um, you know, since he fought Canelo Alvarez. And also, um, called out Danny Jacobs and trying to be all Billy Badass as soon as Danny Jacobs signed an HBO deal. So, it don't mean that these five fighters that I, am, you know, I hate forever because, you know, opinions can change and they can change and step out of their shells and right they wrongs, but right now they on the boxing clinic shit list. Let's just keep it real. Five fighters that I like. This is not gonna be any specific order. Um, my favorite fighter for a long this this year. My favorite fighter for a long time was was Keith Thurman, but obviously with the stagnant career, he ain't gonna make this list for this year. But um, in no particular order, I like the Charlo twins. We are gonna put them as one. Um, you know, this is no specific order once again. I I, I just like what they doing, man. You know, I like that the way Jamil stepped up and KO'd, uh, oh boy, I like the way he stepped up and KO'd uh, Erickson Lubin when everybody, you know, was counting them out in that fight. And Jamal Charlo, I like the way they're moving this year. I like I, I like them to, to pop in 2000, 2018 for sure. I'm, I'm not going to elaborate on too much. They did great things this year. And I think a lot of notoriety is getting on them. A lot of them don't know Jamal is married with a few kids as well. I'm not sure about Jamil. So, you know, they seem to be family men and, uh, you know, God bless them and everybody else in the boxing world to be Pacific. Um, another one is Josh Taylor from the UK. I'm definitely feeling Josh Taylor. 
Um, I everybody want to ride the Josh Kelly wave. I really got to break down film of him, but Josh Taylor is the absolute truth. Um, I look for him to, to rule over the 140 pound division and move up a weight class to two in the near future. I just see the ability and the potential. Um, my eyes are not blinded to UK talent, and you know he's definitely the truth. Um, third man is gonna be a shocker right here. It's Chris Ebanks Jr. Man, um, the rise of Chris Ebanks Jr. He got better after the Billy Joe Saunders loss. Um, he rose up to the occasion, and we're gonna see if he can uh, rise up to the occasion two more times versus Chrissy versus George Groves, and potentially Calvin Smith, and the winner of the fight that that he's fighting in. But I like the way he's trending. I like his attitude. I, I like the improvements and, and his styles and stuff of that nature. And um, boy, is he coming! Another fourth one that I really really like a lot is uh is uh what's uh I'm throwing a blank uh Sullivan Barrera man you know after losing to Andre Ward this year he made an imprint on and he's gonna try to make an imprint next year by fighting old boy from uh uh you know over in Europe and Demetrius Bivol and then he gonna turn around and fight Kovalev as well so you know he got the the the, the uh he got the the blueprint to be great and he got the the tools to be great and he gonna have everything in his favor if he can beat Bivol and, and, and Kovalev he gonna crack that pound for pound top list at least from the boxing clinic for show for show. And, um, you know, it's a welterweight love right here. Um, I like uh, Earl slash Terrence Crawford and, and just this last spot. they probably at the top of my list. I talked about it yesterday and just sitting back thinking about their demeanors and how they how they both dogs and they beasts and they want to, you know, they eat with they eat without a spoon in the fork. They eat with their mouths. And uh, a mouth-watering matchup coming between those guys, hopefully down the line pretty soon. I like their demeanors. I like their quiet confidence. I like their ability. But this is the Boston Clinic's top five fighters, favorite fighters, and fighters that I don't like so much. Won't use the hate word. Shout out to everybody. We gone.